human activity continues to deteriorate our beautiful planet Earth. Deserts are spreading as far as the eyes can see. While soils are becoming more impoverished, global warming is clearly an aggravating factor, and Spain is bearing the brunt of it. When will all of this come to an end? It would appear that the Iberian Peninsula is turning its deserts into forests. But how is this possible? That's what we're going to find out in the rest of this video. Indeed, desert areas like drought-stricken regions are on the rise. The health of the planet is a cause for concern. The health of the planet is even frightening. The cause of these terrible phenomena? Mankind and its various activities. The planet's resources are being overexploited, and this is becoming increasingly harmful. What will our future look like in such a climate? According to numerous studies, the last 20 years have been catastrophic for the Earth. Pressure on soil and land has increased dramatically. In Europe, desertification affects 8% of the territory. Spain is one of the 13 countries most affected. What's more, soil degradation is becoming increasingly widespread. Generally speaking, the Earth is losing its structure. Today, three quarters of the planet's land is thought to be degraded. What will the situation be like in 2050? If we continue as we are, the situation is unlikely to improve. Population growth and changes in our consumption habits are partly responsible for this disaster. The planet is literally exhausted. Harvests could be reduced by 10% by 2050. Aridification is therefore a threat to be taken very seriously. It could have a critical impact on many sectors of activity. In fact, the fight against global warming in all its forms could greatly limit the spread of deserts. What other solutions do we have? Is Spain working miracles? Desertification is particularly prevalent in Spain. Generally speaking, the countries of Europe are supplied by huge greenhouses. However, this kind of agricultural practice is causing the country's accelerated desertification. Soil erosion and degradation are on the increase. In the face of this, small farmers are struggling to maintain production quality. Today, according to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, 74% of Spanish territory is at risk of desertification. Most of this is arid, semi-arid, or dry subtropical land. This does not bode well for the future. However, it's important to make a few things clear. For a start, the dunes of Sahara are in no danger of invading the Iberian Peninsula. The desert should not be confused with the phenomenon of desertification. Indeed, the desert is a mature ecosystem with its own biodiversity. Desertification, on the other hand, is a kind of socio-economic process. When humans overexploit a natural resource in an area where water is a limiting factor, vegetation becomes scarcer. This simplifies the ecosystem and leads to soil degradation. Eventually, they lose their productive capacity. This proves that global warming is not the only cause of desertification. It is helping to exacerbate the problem, making droughts even worse. At present, 20% of Spanish soils are degraded. These are significant figures, which raise questions for the decades to come. Deforestation has been particularly intense. It was aimed at extracting timber or fuel for certain mining activities. As a result, landscapes have been cult as a result, landscapes have been sculpted by humans. Unfortunately, desertification is irreversible. Prevention is therefore essential. Desertification could render entire Spanish localities unviable. Residents may be forced to look for a new place to live. It's safe to say that the Iberian Peninsula is exposed to extreme risks. Despite some awareness, the government seems to be at a loss to propose any real solutions. The state of Mediterranean coast is alarming. Take for example the Almeria coast in eastern Andalusia. It's one of the driest areas in Spain. Its sub-desert climate is more African than European. As a result, it seems set for new extremes. By 2050, temperatures are set to rise by an average of 2.4 degrees. However, this situation is likely to affect many other regions. In Spain as a whole, desertification is a high, even very high risk. Soil artificialization and human pressure along the Mediterranean coasts are affecting coastal ecosystems. Beach strips are receding significantly. Certain metamorphoses are visible to the naked eye. Green algae are invading the coast, while fish are dying out. In fact, the waters are laden with nitrates discharged by nearby farms. Not to mention the pollution of the water tables. Nor should we overlook the impact of tourist pressure on marine flora and fauna. 
The alarm bells are ringing and desertification is becoming one of the country's biggest problems. However, the government does not wish to instill panic in the population. It seems that torrential rains and Saharan sand clouds are just part of the routine. Awareness is growing. Unfortunately for many, the horizon of 2050 remains far too distant. It's true that the real estate boom and the concrete development of the coast have been seen as a sign of prosperity. Changing habits and implementing a process to restore ecosystems is therefore very complicated. Indeed, urban development is seen as an essential driver of the local economy. Nevertheless, it is essential to put the fight against desertification first. Some farmers are trying to take the bull by the horns by practicing what is known as regenerative agriculture. They sow a mixture of grasses and legumes. This creates a vegetation cover that protects the soil from erosion. Could this system become common to all crops? Nothing is less certain, as habits die hard. The idea is to restore watersheds affected by desertification to their natural state. Native species are then planted again. So what solution can Spain come up with? Let's talk about the Great Green Wall of Africa. This is a project to create a vegetation barrier over 7,000 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide. This green belt runs the length of the Sahara Desert. Its aim is to halt the advance of the desert. Every year, the desert gains ground and destroys 2 million hectares of savanna and forest. Begun in 2008, this project has taken a long time to set up. However, it is showing very satisfactory results, particularly in Senegal, where the planting is most advanced. Nevertheless, Africa's Great Green Wall aims to restore 100 million hectares of forest by 2030. Like Africa, Spain has decided to double its efforts. It has adopted a national strategy to combat desertification. This comprehensive action plan aims to increase biodiversity and ecological resilience in the country's driest areas. It also aims to promote actions to restore already degraded soils. We're talking here about preserving a natural capital that is vital to our planet's survival. We need to move towards neutrality in land degradation. This national strategy will therefore establish a network of experimental zones. Soil and water conservation will be promoted. Land management must take a new turn by implementing better forestry practices. The creation of a national desertification atlas is also on the table. A public information platform and a national council on desertification will be set up. So, restoration and recovery of affected areas are finally in the Spanish government's sights. However, not all damage can be repaired. This principle will only be effective on slightly degraded land. From now on, the environment is completely different. The planned strategy will therefore have to adapt to the pace of this new ecosystem. Extreme temperatures have also been a vector for change. Will this strategy be enough? Spain is transforming its deserts into forests. Yet, desertification is still on the rise. Will the Spanish government be able to stop it for good? Don't hesitate to give us your opinion by leaving us a comment below. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon on ATEC.